Gate 14 podcast, less than two weeks away from opening day baseball in St. Louis. This is the closest we've ever been to opening day for the 2023 season. So credit to us for getting through the dog days of spring training. JR, Avery, what's up, boy? What's up, JR? How you doing, brother? Not much, man. Just working hard on the side. We had a business meeting before this, guys. So we're... <laughs> The website's coming soon, folks. And you know what? I'm picking up. I will, you know, I might give a little sneak peek. I might take a picture of the embroidered hoodies and t-shirts and crew necks just for the people. Kind of tease them a little bit. Maybe blue ball them a little bit. I'll take a picture of it today when I go pick it up. Yeah, today I you're think... going. What? You're going today? Yeah, because I'm going to Ottawa, so I'm just going to drive right past it. So I might as well just stop by. <laughs> oh, yeah. What? What's the hat situation like? Let's do a little out loud business <laughs> Oh, talk. no, the, the hats... Uh, so uh, don't get guy, people's hopes up on that. Well, no, I guy, want to know. Guy, as well, I have. I don't know. My expectations are to design them. He, he's designing them. Like he's. It, it's just a simple thing. Like it just like the gate fourteen logo on the center, and then a rope fucking hat. It's not that difficult. I mean, I'll I'll, I'll call him again t- tomorrow and just kind of go a over lot it. like that. I yeah, no, know it's gonna look exactly like that. What, Jar? I said the. Uh, he 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 might shock us with the quality of the hats. Well, I mean, he does stuff for bar down, right? Yeah, so I know. Not, he, does, he, yeah. Does, he does some big stuff. I think we'll be in good hands. Yeah, I think I think the stuff's going to be sick. I, I'm pumped for it. I think it'll be ready for a I mean, or close to ready for the season, so it's going to be sick. But uh, Avery, what's up, buddy? I mean, you've been just sleeping in until fucking 1130. You've been living the dream. I've been up at 9 every day just grinding. Yeah, I slept in until 12. Um, Jesus. Today? Yeah. What's wrong, what's wrong with that, guys? You know, I wake up early when during the week, and then... When it's my time to shine, I can. I love sleeping. Like top ten, big sleep guy. Favorite sleep things guy. to do is just sleep all day. You're a sleep guy, man. Yeah. So, I mean, for this, I set my alarm at twelve. Woke up at twelve. Went downstairs. Expired cereal. I have to, have to muck that right now, and I'm Jesus ready to go. Fucking that's crazy, nightmare. Man. That's a nightmare, dude. I am. Uh, and speaking of nightmares, man, like I have to drive to Ottawa today, and I just keep pushing it. Like I just don't want to do it for work. Yeah, like I, I just I have. Why don't to you do take to, the train or something? Because I have, I need my car to do my job, right? I need to like right. drive to like dissociation. That's if they make you fucking drive to Ottawa on a Sunday. Yeah, so like I am just as in the mud as humanly possible right now. So let's like, talk I, about logistics to St. Louis. Let's talk. <laughs> yeah, we gotta talk about that. So me and Avery. I wait a second. My light hasn't been on this entire time. So let me put this on. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That but, actually made it worse. Right, it, actually, no. I it, think you just look more. It pale. just like me. It, it's your light is so bright. No, I can I can turn it down. Let me turn some, it let down. Me see. Well, what are we bit? thinking here? Keep that going. that looks good. Okay, that looks so like natural I, light. Yeah. So what I was saying was, so me and Avery are going to obviously St. Louis next week. I've saved up for it. I have all the money for it. I'm ready to fire. Thanks to T Mac. Um, <laughs> that's so, so I, bad that that's the way you had to save up for it but i thought we, you were in a good financial spot no okay. i am i am i, I thought, am but now i have now i have just more fuck around money for it yeah hey, this, getting was a his, tattoo. this was his exact quote when we were doing the shopify store today and we were about to put his card in and he said to me i don't know if my card can handle no this. i and just I said, said I, I can't keep soaking stuff on the car like i, I like I, there's a couple other things that I've soaked in the car. I'm trying to think what it has been, but whatever. I don't. I don't care. I'll. I'll do it. I'm I was stop. like, Jesus fucking Christ! Like, are we gonna have to? That's why I was like, No, I'm fine with that. It's just like in my mind, I'm like, I, I already soak. I'm just looking at the bills wise. Like, I'm soaking Fubo TV to watch soccer, which I mean, I guess I could probably de- eliminate. Get that. rid of that shit. Just illegally like a Fubo that. TV, my insurance, my phone bill, <laughs> Zoom premium like there's a couple other things that i'm trying to uh, my gym membership like just like fucking christ now i gotta add this to it and then this like uh shop like not shopify sorry um apple music all this fucking stuff which is i guess ten dollars a month so that's i mean yeah i pay all the same shit and i'm also broke so yeah no exactly so that's we're just a couple broke boys but don't worry this podcast is gonna send us well we have two broke boys and then we have jr like yeah jr who's making who's almost who's i'm gonna say jr's rich which is fine i mean but Anyways, going back to St. Louis here. So I so I called the dealership. I ordered a Hyundai, like Hyundai to hell, by the way. I ordered them, I, like I ordered my new car in like July. And I was like, oh, okay, they said it's going to be here in December. 
uh, it's it's we're in March and it's still not here. So I called them three weeks ago. I was like, is my car going to get here like at any point? And they're like, uh, yeah, two weeks. It, it, it's a scheduled to be here. I call them again last week. End of March is going to be here. So we're going to be cutting it close. I think my car can handle this drive. And honestly, for the content purposes, I think we should do it either way. No, uh, fuck that. Dude. I think my car is going to be able to handle it. It's um just the scariest part about it is, is like we're not driving through the night. One, we're driving during the day for the first for the drive there. So that's that's the check right there on it. I think we can take my car. It's just not a good situation taking a car with 275,000 kilometers over a 2,000 mile or yeah, 2,000 mile or kilometer. That like that's the part where it's like fuck. I don't know where we stand here. Like but I think it's thing good for is, content. So, so now I am offering to take my car and the thing about my car is just a small car. But, but that's two- better though for gas purposes though. I feel like your car is way better on gas. Like mine Hyundai's are like known just to. I mean, they're kind of good on gas, but like, I have a I have a Hyundai too. Yeah, I know, but the I I, I don't know. I guess the bigger the car, I, I'm not I'm not smart with that. Type I think of we're shit. not gonna. We just can't take our golf clubs. What? Why were no you guys no no? We can take our. What do you mean? Clubs? What's the back seat? Who's gonna be in the back seat? We bring in fucking passengers. What are we Uber drivers? What, no what? no no. But if we really want to go cheap on gas, we just don't bring a fat load with us as well. So you guys are planning on golfing in St. Louis? Well, the Friday's Friday we're off. doing nothing. Yeah. No. And and, and the thing is, is but like, it's supposed uh, to rain opening day already. Oh, okay. So then, yeah. So we're already there. But I will be getting the tattoo on Friday. I, I have to call local. I thought I, I was. I called a couple no answers, but I will be getting the tattoo. I'm getting it on my thigh, and it's gonna say Gate 14 forever, just right above it. Just Gate 14 forever. Credit to me. I think it's. I think that's. You show me another podcast that's willing to do that. I I will be getting it. So, yeah, I'm pumped for the St. Louis trip. Listen, I mean, I don't think it's going to, like, tickets are literally $10 or $12. So what's the game plan? You guys have to break down the game plan for everyone. We're staying at the, we're staying at a, we're staying at a casino. Which DraftKings Casino. DraftKings nice. Casino in know Illinois. They had hotels. And then you go over a bridge and you're at uh, St. Louis. Okay. Uh, you're, at, you're at Bush Stadium. So, like, you just take, like, a little transit or something like that and you're there. But the first day we got tickets from our guy Landon, who's like from there. But the second and third games, we're kind of on our own, and the tickets are like thirteen dollars. I mean, I'm not really worried about that aspect. Well, of we it, bought but... them already. They're they're in my possession. Okay, so yeah, yeah. So tickets are like thirteen dollars. But yeah, no, it, it's going to be a good trip. We already have a couple listeners reach out to us from Winnipeg. I think uh, they're going to be down there. They want to meet up with us, kind of meet the Gate 14 boys. So I'm pumped for that. Winnipeg is that yeah. close to St. Louis? No, it's far as it's way further than where we're. No, we I are. mean it's pretty much straight south, is it not? Is Saint is Winnipeg? No, I'm thinking of Montreal. Yeah, Winnipeg is closer, I think, right? Maybe not miles wise, but I, geographically, it seems like I it's don't just think right it's below. close. No, yeah, it's not close. It's not close. But yeah, no, it, it's going to be a sick trip. I'm going to get out. Uh, like it, Ryan, if you're listening to this, who's our uh, going to be our vlog guy during days? I might need to borrow your vlog camera. I, I no, I, 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 yes, <laughs> that's yes. crazy. That's I crazy. am going to be absolutely just use your phone. These, I mean, I guess yeah, Johnny get a hates selfie just stick. using get a stuff selfie that's stick. easy, man. Yeah, just get uh, a no. Selfie I want stick. the quality to be the best. The camera for the people. isn't is going to be. The camera will not be easy to do. Okay, I, you okay, don't well, phone. But what I'm saying is, I want the quality to be good. But I'm just saying this: we need to make sure, Avery, that we vlog a lot of the shit because I am going to be shit. How there, it's going to be a fucking funny content. Like this is going to be great. This is going to be great content. You, the do you think there. you're going to message uh, any of the boys of the pod or what? Like Mitch or, we'll or, see. Uh, or yeah, I, I Mitch don't think probably Jano... won't be there by the yeah. sounds of it. <laughs> yeah, Mitch probably won't be there. But Jano, maybe I don't know. I Jano's not really the type to go out with. Uh, like he's not one of the guys I would say like it's would four go out hours with longer from Winnipeg. Okay, yeah, but he Jano's not really the guy that would go out with us and stuff like that. He never has been. I remember I, when Kevin Smith was here. Me, Jano, and Kevin Smith would play like COD together all the time. Mm-hmm. And like Kevin Smith and I went out to like dinner, and I was like, Jano, do you want to come? He's like, Nah, man, I'm just with my wife. So he's not really the type of guy that would go out with the yeah, boys. Yeah, I'm guessing the families probably come to the opening day. Weekend. Yeah, he's not really the type to go out with the boys. But yeah, no, I'm pumped for it. St. Louis is going to be a movie. The vlog is going to be. I cannot wait for the vlog because me and Avery shit house is going to be like it's going to be it's going to be crazy. I'm pumped for it. Uh, I am going to get annihilated for opening day. Um. <laughs> I think it's going to be sick. I'm pumped for it. The, the content's going to be insane. And uh, drink every single time I say I'm pumped for it. But it, it's going to be sick. And it, it, me and Avery, 
Just two, just two common man, just chopping it up with the St. Louis locals. The beer there is cheap. The dip there is cheap. The zins there are cheap. And we have a we have a Missouri native who's going to show us around all the best places. So I'm sure we'll have a nice dinner that night as well. For sure. No, it's going to be awesome. On him, of course, right? Yeah, no, it's going to be no, awesome. No. We're, <laughs> we're what? We're what? Like eleven days from. Uh... And what is that? That's Final Four weekend as well, is it not? Oh God, that's just going to be scary. Uh, yeah, no, it's um. We're close to baseball, man. I'm yeah. I'm also just. I haven't tuned into a spring training game in a little bit as well. Me neither. I actually haven't. In well, it's too. so the conversation came up of it was obviously KFC from Barstool, which got absolutely bombarded with old takes exposed and shit like yeah, that. I mean, it's tough. T- you can easily search your old tweets for bad words, and the fact that he hasn't done that ever is nuts. And people can just find out so easily. Well, he's an idiot for that generally but edwin diaz going down and then brandon nimmo going down in a spring training game after (laughs) saying he would never play in the world baseball classic again because he didn't want to get hurt it's so dumb and i think just the people saying the world baseball classic isn't fun is like you're the losers they're playing Mm -hmm. for owners all the time that they don't give a fuck about pretty much and you go see all the other teams you finally get to represent your country that means something to everyone else but the u.s and they think U.S. people say, oh, it just doesn't matter, which is very wrong. It sucked that Canada wasn't very good this year. But, I mean, it's still exciting to see people play for Team Canada, right? That's mm-hmm. a great point. That's a great point. I mean, a, a lot of the times, these guys, yes, they're getting paid a lot. But at the end of the day, it's like they are the most replaceable. The owners couldn't give a fuck less about them. If it was up to the owners, they'd pay them less. And then at the end of the day, they're literally playing with guys they grew up with. Like a lot of these guys that mm-hmm. played for Puerto Rico and Dominican came up through these academies together or just known each other since they were kids. And now they get to play on the grand stage of the World Baseball Classic together. I don't understand why people try to downplay it. Like, it's awesome, man. I mean, that game yesterday, Venezuela and the USA was awesome. Awesome, dude. And and if you watch that and you can't tell me it's a meaningless and you try to tell me it's meaningless or the players don't give a fuck about it, you're just brain dead, man. I mean, we have Trey Turner showing a shit ton of emotion, which is a guy, in my opinion, that rarely really shows emotion on the baseball field, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, that's a guy that, in my opinion, is kind of looked at as like a a mellow dude that's kind of calm or just doesn't really like do that stuff on the field. And he was going bananas after that grand slam. And like the whole team was waiting for him at home plate. You had Schwarber and JT right at the front of it. Teammates with him on the Phillies, the world baseball classic fucking rules. And it actually aggravates me when you have these fucking clowns that refuse to play for their country in it. And I'm not going to name names, but there's a certain brother that, that his brother was the catcher for Canada that didn't want to play in it. Cause he didn't want to hurt his leg. Like, dude, you, this is a once you every four years this takes place, man. If and you have a chance to kind of wear your country with, you get to play for your country with pride. Why not want to put the best team out there instead of putting these like eighteen year old, nineteen year old minor leaguers out there? Like, play for your country. Like, want to have some fucking pride? Like the U.S. team, the top ten guys that led the 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 at Major League Baseball in WAR. Like, I think six of them were American, and none of them played for Team USA this year. Mm-hmm. How, like, that just doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't sit right with me when you don't want to represent your country. Because these guys, like, the younger version of you, if you told 14-year-old Max Scherzer or Justin Verlander, would you play for your country in a World Baseball Classic? I know it didn't exist when they were kids, but would you play for your country in World Baseball Classic? I'm uh, guaranteeing you the younger version of yourself would take that opportunity a million times out of a million. These people are just, it just pisses me off when you're not fielding the best product out there, man. It does. It's, it's like what it, it just, it's sickening. And that team Canada team was embarrassing. It's uh, it starts from the top though. When you're a kid, right? Like if in Japan, it matters in Cuba, mm-hmm. They have Luis Robert and Yoan Moncada finally playing after they defected for the first time, saying it was the most proud they've ever been to come back, right? It just all starts from where you're from, and we have media in America saying it's not important. I'll just go North America in general. Randy Rosarena is from Cuba, and he asked the Mexican like president multiple, multiple times to make him a temporary citizen just so he could play for Mexico. Like, that's not happening really for us i guess we have freddie freeman doing that in honor of his mom which is nice but i think it's just the north american media 
downplaying the World Baseball mm-hmm. Classic, which makes it's, the players it, it, it think makes, it doesn't matter. But then it Japan, it's like Shohei Otani should not be playing in this. Like compared to like, if he was American, no way he would play. I would think. Yeah, they, they think the World Series is more important. It's who the fuck is the World Series for, man? Like it, sure it's you could say it's best on best, but it's really not comparatively to if you get everyone from their country best on best. I everyone loves that tournament style way more than just the World Series. I just think it just it, it's just such a lazy and stupid take to say like this shit. You got to look at guys from the Dominican, right? A lot of these guys came from nothing. Like they're just their life in the Dominican was strictly baseball. They had aspirations, goals of representing the country that they take a shit ton of pride in in the, in the Dominican Republic, and they get a chance to play for that badge on the front of their jersey. And to say it's meaningless is like spitting in those kids' faces, man. I mean, that Dominican team was stacked. Did they win? Fuck no. One of the biggest meltdowns of all time. But what I'm saying is, it's like. The fact that these media members who think they're just above everything, like I guess KFC is just, it's just stupid, dude. It just, it's so, it's such a lazy, stupid take to say it's just, it's a meaningless exhibition of baseball. Like, try telling that to Otani, who literally, he posts Instagrams after every single game with his teammates. He gets to play with guys he grew up with. It's just, it, it's it's an awesome tournament. It's, the other it's cool the other watch. big thing was popularity of baseball is only in North America. Shohei Otani has more followers than the New York Yankees on Instagram. So you can't tell me that it's just a North American thing. Like it is way more international sport. And when when did it also become uncool to have like country pride and stuff too for North America? Like you seeing those Dominican teams, the Cuban teams, Venezuela, them just going out there partying and cheering on their team is awesome. And then the american fans to show up it's a cesspool of guys that are rivals during season that get to come together for like a two-week time span put their differences aside and play for their country like do you think that there is guys in the dominican republic that are playing with each other that genuinely like each other like that are like have bitter rivalries in the majors or stuff along those lines or all everything like that i i it's it's a cool opportunity because at the end of the day, you're playing for your country. You get to represent your country. You get to potentially bring a, a championship to say we're the best country in baseball in the world back to your country. And it makes no sense to me why these guys, like these North American culture, just refuse to accept that it's a big tournament or refuse to play in it. It's mm-hmm. so dumb to me, dude. Yeah, it's uh, it one, it's like no excuse not to play because their contracts are guaranteed like with their team. So it's like, why not? just yeah. play like who like and also it's it's crazy like baseball is probably like the second most diverse sport like soccer world cup is so good because it's so competitive like so many countries put out competitive teams and like the world baseball classic i mean that was a quarterfinal game yesterday and it was like it felt like it was the finals you could have told me it was the finals it was, he felt said like it was it the was biggest the home run he's ever hit Trey Turner. yeah yeah and it was a quarterfinal game like i think like it's crazy though how it's like Look, baseball isn't really, I would say, an injury, high risk injury sport. Maybe for pitchers, like it's it's potentially likely, but for position players, like I'd argue that hockey, you have a better chance of getting injured. Like, yeah. And look at look at when has a hockey player ever said, "I'm not playing," and it's the same situation. The media has deemed it as important, right? Uh huh. It's yeah. Like the you're right. It's like the media's issue of like deeming this not like as important because like it really makes no sense why they wouldn't want to play in this and like looking like hockey would be the issue with hockey is just like there's really only two dominant countries in a sense of like Canada is so good now the U.S. have gotten better and better every year that we would die for if it was as kind of competitive as the baseball tournament like that would be so cool for hockey and hockey you still see it when they win like when canada wins they're going nuts and they'll speak on it so it's really just odd like to why it's getting a lot of hate when really if it was being loved like the perception from everyone would be so different if the media was praising this Dude, tournament because they're you, like when do you see in the mlb like people going to home plate to celebrate like a home run like it is just 
absurd yeah, you know, the celebrations like, going on. Like you've done that in baseball on your teams in like playoffs and big yeah. situations. Like yeah. those are the best games you ever play in. Yeah. And yeah. You like, don't do that if you don't care. Like it's not it's definitely not fake. And it's just everyone's it's definitely so not soft fake. You're right. Now, man. Like I just the idea of I'm gonna get injured. You could get injured fucking walking down the street. Yeah. You could like, get you can get it like I Jordan saw Balazov someone... got punched out of the bar had his wa- his had his mouth wired shut. Yeah, that and there's guys get injured in baseball freak injuries. We've had guys get injured putting on their fucking baseball pants in the major leagues. We've had guys get injured untying their shoes in the major. Didn't league. Alec Manoa hurt his back slipping down the stairs? Like, like yeah, exactly. Like should we just ban stairs from major league baseball? Yeah, it just, it's, it's it's so dumb. The injury thing is dumb. Like you can't like the way Diaz got injured was. Like, we've seen that in the majors happen. Like, that is such a stupid injury. Like, the fact that, that the fact I don't even know how that injury actually happens from just celebrating is just wild to me. Of like, you just tear your fucking kneecap apart. Um, but I mean, what, the, how the fuck was that ever? How was that ever going to it was be a freak like, injury. like, like, you have probably more ABs in fucking spring training than what you're showing in this world baseball class. Like Altuve getting hit in the wrist. That's just part of the game. That just happens. You can get like, that in, in live BP on a backfield. You can get hit in the wrist. Yeah. Like it, it's just such a lazy, stupid take. But yeah, and there's to be honest, like in terms of timing of this tournament, like this is the best time to have it. Really? You I don't think have it, is. it. You can't have it in between the the you can't have it in between at the break. I don't I think, think it would can. work. I think less people would even play because they see it as a time that they could get off. I think you got to have it like they do with hockey. They did it before the, the season. No, hockey was during. If no, I they did the World Cup of hockey. The World Cup was. Oh, before. World Cup of hockey. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking about the Olympics. Olympics, Olympics is different, I'd say. Um, well, because the Olympics happen at a certain time because yeah. of. Yeah. the event that they are not because uh-huh. it's a one but Abe, what do you think on like i think like this is the perfect time i mean it's a I, great tune-up to get into the season sure i think it's a great tune-up but i think in a perfect world if people take the injury thoughts out of their head it's an all-star break type yeah break. that's what i'm yeah. saying like a one no two. i say i say if i agree with you maximize Jer. the amount of people in it I think this is the best time. But, but we're I not going to agree... get the best product, though, because they're not yes, fully yes, ramped up. I agree. Yeah, like pitchers won't be able to throw complete games, which would be I'm cool fine to with see. The, I'm, and I'm fine with the pitch limit rule. I think it's mm-hmm. good. I, it makes sense. Sorry, I don't think it's good. In general sense, it makes sense for this tournament for to keep yeah, people coming back. Yeah. But, I mean, look, I watched the game yesterday, and it's like... So, fuck. we get... The, it's other, awesome. the only other op... Yeah, that, that shit was awesome was unreal yeah just the home run going nuts seeing people out of the dugout like that venezuela was out of their dugout waving someone home the third base coach was the yeah. only one who held like, him up like it's canada so... got in a fucking bench brawl four years ago was that yeah. four or eight no years it was like ago. 2013 four. 2013 yeah. but like that's just how like you don't just get it if this tournament meant nothing you do not just get into a full bench brawl with another country the only other time of year could happen is like how they do the world championships in hockey you wouldn't get all of the best but like the players would kind of trickle back after they lose in the playoffs type thing would mm-hmm. be a cool yeah that's another good yeah. point yeah oh, like how they the do season. yeah yeah because yeah, world championships if you lose in the first round sometimes they take those guys on their teams right there's oh, a like, lot of things like how they do the uh i forget what that tournament's called the one they do for hockey right the exact same thing yeah world championships yeah, but that tournament is fucking dog shit. No one sure. watches that. Yeah, I know, but that's because the, the World Series is on. That's also never part. in Canada as well, the World Championship. Like Yeah, that it's is just true. not we've we've been brainwashed to think the Stanley Cup matters more. At the end of the day, what I've learned with the Gate 14 Twitter, and we'll get into it in a little bit, is there's just no pleasing anyone. Like the yeah, this some some will argue now too is too early. Some will argue now is perfect timing. Some will say all star break is dumb. Someone will say the all star break makes it's just impossible to just kind of find a common ground that everyone agrees on. That's just how the world works. So I think them Twitter's not now, also a real place. Like not that many people are on Twitter if you think about it. So like general consensus on Twitter is very different than general consensus in the like on everyone's thoughts of it. Yeah. I think. This is completely off topic, but I have to bring this up because I got into a debate yesterday. This is a take that I have. Like, this isn't a take, I guess. I just need to know if I am the weirdo. I sleep in a t-shirt 
and shorts and obviously my underwear. Am I weird for that? Like, do do is sleeping naked what everyone does? Because I was told that just everyone sleeps naked, and I'm the weirdo for sleeping in a t-shirt and shorts. I'm a I'm a weirdo when it comes to sleeping as well. I'll get nice and cozy. Like, it'll go no pants on, but like a sweater and socks every time in the winter. I'm sleeping in that shit. Socks is crazy, but yeah, I, I just had that debate, and they're like, dude, what do you mean you sleep? with like a t-shirt and shorts like that's just so fucking weird jr what how how are you a sleeper i don't think that's weird i mean i just sleep with like i mean like boxers a shirt i'll sleep with shirt like the odd time see i was told sleeping with i don't the think shirt it's... is weird no that's not weird i don't think that's weird yeah, it's, yeah I, I was just in an argument i was in the mud just getting absolutely roasted and by the way speaking of that i am out on simulators i think simulators are the dumbest fucking <laughs> things ever it they just simulate Golf, golf simulators. Things? Yeah, golf simulators. It's just the reads are terrible. Like, I will hit a shot that in my mind, I'm like, this is in the woods, and it'll just be a dead straight drive on a simulator. And I'm like, this, this is not real. This is I might not- just become a sim guy, just like a really good sim guy, not good on the court. Understanding in, how in like the sim Korea, works. Yeah. They, do, like, they don't play real golf. They play simulator golf, like a lot like, of them. Maybe I have a chance if I just like put my focus at the sims. Maybe I have a better chance of being good at golf. <laughs> I'll tell you what, because yesterday I was striping, but like I hit my two iron yesterday. It said 288 yards. And I'm like, this, no, fuck no, I swear, no, but th- this simulator was juiced. Like, cause my buddy was hitting drives 330 and he never <laughs> does that. I was like, this like simulators are a sham. And and this guy was trying to tell us, like, oh yeah, there's six simulators in here. They're fifty thousand dollars each. I'm like, this simulator is a piece of shit. It's <laughs> it's actually like how much did you pay for that sim round? Uh, a hundred dollars each, dude. I cannot believe that's how much it costs to fucking go play sim golf. Yeah, it is nuts. Like, like you're real, better off. Like I obviously round. we can't go on the course, but like, like you're just like better off just actually playing golf. <laughs> <laughs> but people love sims. People love sims. I don't like, know why. I guess it's a cool setting to just kind of chill with your with your buddies and just shoot, but. Mm-hmm. It's just so, like the putting is so dumb. Oh yeah, I don't putt that shit. Yeah. Like it's got to be a profitable business, right? Eh? Like you just get a couple sims, and then at some point, run. once you hit a certain level, it's just all profit. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I just but that guy had six simulators. It's in Burlington, and there was fifty thousand dollars a sim. He said, like that, mm. that won't be profitable that, for a that long can't. time. Like, is a normal sim cost that much? Eh? No, if my buddy has it? a sim in his house, and it's he costed his dad seventeen thousand dollars, and it has a track man that has everything, and it's sick. Like, I uh, that, like I don't think they're fifty k. Yeah, he was just fucking trying to. I don't know. I don't know what he I mean, was. As doing, long as you have a, tra- a track man's what ten thousand dollars. Yeah, and then you just need to have like a a roof that's like tall, like a a ceiling that's high enough, and then you have to have like the the grass, and then the actual um. So now it's, the, it's like the force plates in the ground, though, too, if you have that. Yeah. That makes them expensive. Mm-hmm. But I I just want to play real golf. I'm bringing my golf clothes to St. Louis. That was dumb of me, man. Isn't yeah, no. the, the weather isn't going to be that different than here? Sure, but 10 degrees, that it hasn't been snowed like fuck over the whole the whole winter, right? So, you fucking boys, man. Um, I, we could see, also go watch my brother play baseball four hours away. We're, we're on the Saturday? It's Friday. He's in Nashville. Where is it? At Nashville, yeah. If we're going to Nashville, we're going out. Yeah. Are you are you outside of your mind? Like, what? What do you? If he plays Friday, don't the Jays play Friday? Go down Broadway Street. The Jays don't play Friday. You're better off. You're better off going to. Yeah, but when do the Jays play? Uh, Saturday. A one or three. Yeah. So that's a little tough. You could stay in Nashville that day and if then you go... think Avery, we're just going to Nashville to watch your brother and we're not going on Broadway. Eight Street? hours driving though, j- just as a fucking detour. That's something like Johnny and I would do though. We're you both would yeah, do no, that. that's you no, we would, would have that. nothing to do and we'll say you want to go to Nashville. That's like that's that's already and it would be great vlog content. It yeah. would be all time. Just but like yeah, a detour to Nashville would be fucked. I could be down for that. I really could I, be down. We're for not that. gonna do that. I I've talked myself out of driving eight extra hours. Yeah, that's just absolutely just. Well, do the Preds play? Maybe the Preds play. You guys can watch a Preds game. Oh my god, that'd be sick. 
Yeah, I, I and yeah, I guess we can go into Jay's talk now. I mean, not much to talk about. Obviously, like I said, I haven't really been watching that many spring training games because I'm just the common man, and I'm assuming 99% of our listeners haven't really been dialed in on spring training besides, obviously, the you say starts. But I just want to make this clear, and I, this is my public statement. I am done arguing with these fucking guys, burner accounts on Twitter, who just skew stats to kind of like push their narratives and arguments to make Geek 14 podcast look dumb. I'm done with it. There's these two guys. I see. Let me let me stop you there. I don't think they try and make us look dumb. I think that's how they feel about things in general. And it's just they disagree. with The worst us. thing we ever did as a society, the new pandemic is making baseball savant and fan graphs just the, a click away for these guys that just don't get like love to try to slam dunk on people and just try to do that type of stuff. There is one guy. I don't know if I should say his Twitter name. I won't say it. He is pissing. He responds to every single tweet of ours disagreeing with us. And I'm just like, dude, you don't follow us. You don't understand the jokes we make. Why put yourself through the headache of just responding to all of our stuff? Why Why do that? Why do you enjoy do like, why do you enjoy getting in arguments um, with accounts? One, you don't care about and two, you don't follow. Like why? I'm out on it. I'm no. I will not be responding anymore to these fucking guys. There's three accounts in my mind that I know that are just like 18 year old kids that just spend all day on fan graphs and baseball savant trying to downgrade accomplishments the Toronto Blue Jays have made. Vladdy is a good defender, and I'll take that to the fucking grave. And people that have disagreed that, with me, that's more. That's more where you need to go with this. I think. Then, I mean, obviously, those kids are just like you can create front office jobs over doing stuff like that like people get ma- managerial jobs in pro soccer now from playing football manager or whatever that game's called like there is a way to become successful off of just knowing that stuff so well so i won't personally i won't knock people who do that all the time there's a way you can create a career out of that which is fine being burner accounts and stuff like that it kind of sucks but whatever that's just how they've chosen to do it the the fight that you got in was vladdy gold glove stuff and John Boy starts off saying he's a bad defender. There is some flaws to the Gold Glove Award now because of the guys they give nominations to. Juan Soto had to be one of the worst defenders in baseball. Yeah, last no, season. you're making good points. I, I shouldn't, and I, I will backpedal on this. I should have used the de- defensive run save argument to saying that, like, how could you say Vladdy's a a terrible bad defender? When he has a, he was first in the American League in defensive runs saved for first baseman. Sorry, so I should have used that. I shouldn't have used the Gold Glove argument because obviously it is skewed. So I will backpedal on that. Thank you, Johnny. But it just aggravates me. It's like, and people are, and this guy's trying to say to me that like, oh, you shouldn't talk about Toronto sports fans like that when they're arguing. No, I will. Toronto sports fans are the worst. Like we can never have anything nice. Vladdy won the Gold Glove Award, and we have these fucking burner accounts trying to downplay him winning a Gold Glove. Like, uh, is the Gold Glove skewed? Or I get, yeah, it's it's skewed, but they they don't give it to fucking bums. Like the uh, Juan Soto was a nominee, sure. Did he did he get the Gold Glove? No. At some point, you have to be at least a good defender to get the Gold Glove, and that was Vladdy's knock his entire career. Was Vladdy is a bad defender? Vladdy this, Vladdy that. He's not. He can't, he's not a good defender. We have to move to first base. He moves to first base. He wins a gold glove. He improves himself defensively. And we just can't enjoy it because we have these stack guys trying to downplay a Toronto Blue Jays player winning a major award. No, depend, no, doesn't matter how you look at the award. He won a major award. Why can't we just fucking enjoy that? Why can't we just enjoy that instead of having all these guys downplaying it? That's all I'm asking. We can't that, have anything nice. Yeah, that's that's where I think the argument starts at. We you're we think these guys are Toronto Blue Jays fans, so you should like just be happy that the guy won the award. That's the boat I'm in. It's tough. You can't win arguments on Twitter, man. It's just it's pretty much impossible to do. Baseball sets as well. Like what I do for fantasy baseball is you can skew a player in so many different directions based on his stats. It's like something that I'll do pretty much professionally and just skew it ways of that I think can show these guys are good or bad and i think we should try and show that our guys are good like that's what we want to do but you'll never win fights on twitter with guys who don't put their faces out there it's yeah not, and not i'm under the way. i'm under the impression that and i actually want to make this a law that was more against like 
Yankees burners, not against the Jays guys. Well, the Jays Those burners too idiots. piss me off too. But um, the like no, actually, the, I, I do love rating Kikuchi. I do love um, Manoa to Kirk. I love all those guys that are on our side. But um, <laughs> uh, if you have a burner account or if you have a Twitter, a social media account, because people say crazy shit now with no repercussions, like I'll kill you and stuff like that. Like I've been getting some fuck, like people roast me in my DMs, or, like call me a fucking idiot, four eyed loser, and shit. Like I get it pretty bad. Um. You should have your account attached to your name. I don't care if it's not the if it's not the actual Twitter account name like Johnny Junta or whatever, but your name has to be attached to the account. So more people are held accountable for their stupid fucking shit they say, or just at least there's a name to what the takes are and stuff like that. Credit to us because we take it on the chin. If we have a bad take, we have to deal with it face to face on our t- comments. Or will just people like be like, that's Johnny. That's a bad take from Johnny. These people with burners who have thousands of followers, there's just no, like, who, what are you going to say? Like, there's just no name attached to it. You can just say whatever the fuck you want, no repercussions, and no one knows who you are. So you're a coward in my mind. If you have a burner account, you're a coward. I I think one of the funnier things will be if we're at a Jays game and one of the guys with the burners, like, comes to say hi. And it's like, oh, I, I run this account. Just be like, I, I would never, I have no like face to a name. It'd be so, so interesting to see what they're actually, what these guys like. look like. Yeah. It's just, are you that, are you that like low self esteem? I don't you think can... they ever, I don't think they ever start off as bad things when you make a burner like about a team account. It's when we have our friend like uh, Leafs. <laughs> His burners are are meant for bad things. Yeah, no, but a lot of these burners, though, it's like if you are going to if you want to have an opinion on something and if you want to come at people who put their face to their takes, you can't be a burner account, dude. You can't be a burner account. If you want to actually hold people accountable for their takes from your account, you can't be a burner. You have to have your name attached to it so you could have a face to face tweet, tweet to tweet confrontation about your takes. If you have a burner account with no name attached to it, no accountability towards it, I will never, I'm done answering. I will never, I, this is my promise to everyone. I will never answer these burner accounts again. I will never give them the, 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 the I'll it's never give them the public happen, listen. Johnny. You're going to tell you, I will. I, 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 I tell you, I will. I, will. I think that's the difference between people who want to like make a name out of it for themselves. Like if we, if we wanted to be anonymous on here, it wouldn't do much for our careers if we want to do something in this field, right? Yeah. So it's like, hey, these guys are like mechanical engineers in their third year of university, but they want to get some takes off. Here we go. Yeah, I guess that's a good point. But another thing. We do I have wanna... Jared trying to be a CEO of like eight different companies, but he's still. He's yeah, still exactly. Here. JR puts a face to it. He, he, he owned up to that Yankees take because a lot of people when the Yankees won the division <laughs> came back to that uh, TikTok and stitched it and stuff like that. So that was bad. But another thing I want to talk about. So. I got into the mud again on Twitter with this, and I tweeted about Blair and Barker saying that the Toronto Blue Jays don't have a World Series bullpen. What the fuck does a World Series <laughs> bullpen mean? What does that mean? And let me bring you some stats. I'm a stat guy now. The Phillies last year made it to the World Series. Their World Series bullpen was ranked 23rd in Major League Baseball. Jays were 10 spots ahead. 10 spots ahead. The Atlanta Braves, who won the World Series in 2020 or 29 or 2021, 2021, had the 12th best World Series bullpen in baseball. Is there is there arguments to be made about other bullpens winning World Series like the Rays and or the Dodgers and the Rays and the Astros? Sure. But what constitutes a so-called what Blair and Barker were saying? The Jays have a good bullpen, but not a World Series. What constitutes that? What makes up a good bullpen? Because if last time I checked, the Jays have Jimmy Garcia, who has one of the best four seam fastballs in baseball, right? Great reliever, had an expected 2.9 ERA last year. They had Anthony Bass last year with a sub two ERA. Is that good? You tell me. Only had him for half the season. Jordan Romano, arguably one of the best closers in the American League. He, I've been diving into his, like, his stats they look more impressive every time i look at them like exactly his stuff, his stuff plus is actually really fucking good exactly and another guy they have in the bullpen that we haven't even mentioned who apparently the jays don't have a eighth inning guy eric swanson sub two era so you have the best one of the best closers in baseball 
a guy with the best four seam fastball in baseball, stat wise, that guy, Eric Swanson, sub two ERA, Anthony Bass, sub two ERA. And then you have guys like Zach Pop, who is severely underrated, who could be a great piece of this bullpen. But I got to hear the mainstream media, whatever, Blair and Barker, tell me the Jays don't have a World Series bullpen, don't have a good bullpen. Make it fucking make sense to me. Because last time I checked, the Orioles bullpen last year that was really good didn't even make the playoffs. And they just had a ton of scraps that they figured out. And the Jays are doing that exact model with, with the Fernandez brothers. Who who have been impressive so far this spring? Who throw absolute gas? So make it make sense to me what a World Series bullpen means. What the fuck does that mean? I think we'd have to ask Blair and Barker. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying though, like how 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 can you argue this when the Jays have clearly made strides to better their bullpen? It yeah. doesn't it, it doesn't make sense to me. The Jays bullpen last year at the second half of the year, once they got Anthony Bass, was one of the best in baseball. I mean, yeah, that we haven't played mm-hmm. a regular season game yet, so yeah. I yeah, like, what do they want them? That's the thing, too. It's like, what the fuck do you want Atkins to do? Like, we want him to go, like, one, there's just, there wasn't many people to sign. And we don't, the Jays don't sign relievers to long-term deals to that type of money. Like, we've never done. We've always done, like, three-year deals. And there do wasn't want- anyone really available. And what we needed was someone that could strike out a lot of people, which is tough to find just fucking laying around available on other teams. So I think they just, they, I mean, just take it that this bullpen got better than last year. Like it got better than last year. Chad green was an underrated signing that we'll have on the back end. And there's still the deadline of like adding like a huge piece if we think we need it. But I mean, I think people just think that, like revamping the bullpen is an easy thing when like look at the Astros like half those guys are nobody's making barely any money so and it's like they, did they, sure did they, they have they their want... closer but like guys like Presley aren't just available laying around somewhere <laughs> yeah you know and I mean? the Jays have a great closer yeah Dora Romano is a great closing pitcher mm-hmm. like I, I don't get it man I and, and oh, but, oh by the way do they let's think pick a, well, do they uh, think sorry, they want, let, like, let me go Kenley let me go Jansen, second. yeah like it's like people like think that like like every team wants a good bullpen but most of it is developed through like their system like that comes up and then you have the odd guy like fucking a diaz or something that becomes a free agent gets paid a fucking shitload now look at him he's out for the entire year so it's like that's why it's tough to guarantee so much money for relievers too and 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 what do they expect like for example, last year, one of the best relievers in baseball, Jorge Lopez. Am I, is that his name, Avery, the or- yeah. uh, Orioles reliever? The Twins picked him up. They didn't even make the fucking playoffs, and he was mm-hmm. terrible for the Twins. It is such a toss-up with these reliever yeah. guys, and you have guys who last year, you we only had Anthony Bass for half a season last year. We only had Zach Paul for half a season last year. We didn't have Eric Swanson last year. Our bullpen was just legitimately at one point, just Jimmy Garcia and Jordan Romano, and like you had Simber in high leverage situations. So for them to just downplay this bullpen is idiotic for me. I th- I made it very clear. I think this bullpen is going to be one of the best the Jays have had in the last ten years, and it's going to show with these advanced numbers that people bring up or whatever. But Zach Pop's going to be a great arm in the bullpen. Adam Simber, although people talk shit about him, he throws slow. He's a very tough at bat with the way he throws. Right, and he and. Trevor Richards has a really good changeup, terrible fastball. The Jays don't need, and it's like, the Jays don't need guys like Simber. They don't need guys like Richards. They don't need guys like Nate Pearson. They don't need guys like Zach Paul to pitch in these high leverage situations because they already have their four big dogs that are going to be pitching Mm -hmm. in those situations. So why are we worrying about the back half of the bullpen when the Jays have four guys that are really good in the bullpen? It's just never good enough for these people. That's what aggravates me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we still haven't played a regular season game yet. Let's just, <laughs> yeah. Let's just get yeah, to set, like, you could, like, okay, let's be honest. Like, the Jays have a team that will be in a playoff position, most likely, come that deadline. So it's like, why are they even saying that now? Like, what do you want? Like, that's a thing. It's like, Flicks what do you want? You know, like, fuck. but how could you judge a bullpen in your right mind in spring fucking training? I know we make the spring training videos yeah, stuff like that, but how could you judge if the Jays, the Jays don't have a world series bullpen, which is what they continue to say a world series bullpen. They don't have a solidified eighth inning guy. 
I guess Anthony Bass is dead. I guess mm-hmm. I guess Jimmy Garcia is dead. Like it just aggravates me that we're already discussing the trade deadline for a bullpen piece in the month of March when the bullpen <laughs> hasn't even played in regular season yet. What are mm-hmm. we doing? Yeah, it's it's wild. But I think I just... did you guys see that that comment from Pete Walker on Barrios' start? Yes, I was very happy with that. What did he I say? was happy with that, but also like Barrios, what the fuck are you doing? What did he like, say? Why? He pretty much just said like uh, Walker just said he was worried, but then when he reviewed the tape, like it, it wasn't anything. Like Barrios didn't pitch to like I guess the sequence that they've been talking about, and it's like, well then why, why the not? fuck isn't he? Well, <laughs> like, it's <laughs> the catcher's calling the game, right? If you're not shaking off and shit, and maybe he's a guy who doesn't like to shake off the catcher, so he's just. But like you got to think, catchers are working with the pitchers in in the World Baseball Classic, like. Barrios be like, hey, like, this is what I'm doing this year. Like, this is how I, like, it just seems so odd. Like, Barrio, like, what the fuck? And then, <laughs> like, that isn't good news at all. Like, he's going right into the season pretty much through that. And he said something like that. Like, I was like, okay, so I guess they're not on the same fucking page. I know the catcher calls the game, but, like, most catchers are just probably like, hey, what like what are you throwing this year? And what's your what's your approach? And then tell like I thought that was crazy. Yeah, I was. I mean, that's just like let's just have you throw the pitch that is fucking terrible. Majority of a start when we've worked our entire spring training on you not throwing that pitch. How does that make sense? So dumb, dude. So dumb. But another thing I want to talk about. And I tweeted this, and someone said like a lot of people were saying bad take and stuff like that. I don't even think it was a bad take. Like. The Toronto Blue Jays starting pitching depth is terrible. Why why am I getting roasted for that? Who is who's the sixth guy? Mitch White, obviously, not bad, I guess. But after that, it's like just a crapshoot. Drew Hutchinson is terrible. Terrible. Thomas Hatch is terrible. I mean, you got Zuleta, who I think is really good, and Ricky Tiedemann, but those are two young guys, right? Like the depth isn't good for this pitching staff. Zach Thompson is also bad. Zach Thompson is real life terrible. So yeah. I, I just, I don't get why that's even a hot take. This Jays bullpen is not, I mean, this Jays starting rotation depth is not good. And you're really relying on two wild cards and Barrios and Kikuchi to perform. Cause if they don't, you just have three good starting pitchers. Which most yeah, teams I, have. Yeah. Like I, the only argument would be against that would be that like name me a team that has really good starting pitching depth other than like the yeah, Astros, Astros, like who have like a, a six guy who really could be in anyone's rotation. And it's like, it's just tough to find. It seems like it's tough to find. Like, it seems like our, our depth looking at it on paper is bad. Like the actual five is good depth. Like we have five good starters. Um, That is like, I would say top five, for sure top five in the majors but who has the best six guy and yeah you could argue i would say that we're like average in the majors. Yeah, i guess it was a crazy guy. take I, I was just maybe just skewed by the recent results of how thomas hatch drew hutchinson and uh zach thompson is pitched because man i really 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 don't want to see those guys in in an actual big league game man though they are so bad thomas hatch is he's terrible man he is fucking ter- he is terrible. You like, gotta hope that oh God, man. Yeah, there it's like it, Ryu it is, it's, it's definitely not good. Yeah, and Ryu, Ryu, yeah, that's Ryu a good point too, too Avery. Yeah, Ryu will good, be back. But he's gonna be on team. pitch res- at like restrictions. As yeah, he, comes he could back. be used as like what do you think? Like he's maybe like a like kind of a, a raw stripling type twice through the order. Yeah, like maybe, yeah, like maybe as like a six guy that can come in and be an kind of an opener to start type thing. Did you guys see those Tapia comments? What do you say? He said some dumb shit. Like he was happy to be a Red Sox because the fans are better there and it's boring in Toronto. Oh Did yeah, Tapia, that? shut the fuck up, Tapia, you bum motherfucker. We pumped your tires for so long, and that's what you do. What a loser. What an absolute loser clown show comment. I mean, looking just looking at these comments here, right? I mean, let's look at some of here. Zach Thompson's ERA in the spring, 745. Um, Thomas Hatch, 1042. Mm-hmm. Drew Hutchinson. What's Drew Hutchinson's 
And I know it's spring, but you're still at the end of the day, like, like, let's have a fucking let's have a pulse here, please, for the love of God. Drew Hutchinson, 1157. So those are three guys with over a seven ERA that are supposed to be the depth pieces to your starting pitching rotation. That's just not gonna play. Are you guys like, are you guys worried about Ricky at all with these he, shoulder injuries adding up for someone who hasn't thrown that hard for that long in his career? Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't think he I don't think he when he comes up he's gonna be a starting pitcher. Don't Maybe you guys think? Be, like No, I think he'll be a starting pitcher. I just think it just depends on what time of the season, I think, when mm-hmm. they'd use him that way. I, I don't yeah. think they'd start his clock. I know they've changed all of that. The rules for that stuff. I don't think they'd start his clock for him to be a reliever in the bigs, unless it's close to the end of the season. No, I just guy. want him to be. I just want him to be good so bad, man. Like he what is, is that? Like, That's like two shoulder injuries in the last, like, end of, in the middle of last season. Yeah, and then now. Yeah, mm-hmm. no, it's not great, man. It's really not great. I, but, I, I, yeah, I guess that's a like a crutch with Ricky Tiedem and like, we 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 have such a good a guy that's so good going to be coming up but he is i guess kind of leaning into being more injury prone than the most than most of them right yeah like that's what you yeah. get when you throw it faster than fuck unfortunately yeah yeah no it's yeah you're right i just yeah it, it, it's a weird situation to be in that's that's the moral of the story it's like a he's so young throws so hard mm-hmm. and um it's a guy that's just He's I, yeah, two shoulder injuries is not great, especially how young he is. But I just hope he's going to be good, man. I really do. Obviously, I, f- I love Big Dick Rick. He's all time. But yeah, that's uh yeah, that's 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 like that's a good point to be made. But we got another guy we got to talk about who's opening a lot of eyes. And I saw Keegan Matheson just tweeted about him. Man, Whit Merrifield looks really really good. Whit Merrifield is such an underrated piece of this team. This is a guy who is going to be platooning everywhere who can platoon everywhere who has shown who has actual big league success behind him i mean i don't know he he's he's da- i mean he's dazzled this spring look at his numbers here he's in 346 379 obp 615 slugging he's looks he's looked great and he's playing really good defensively but uh i'm pumped for i'm pumped for wit so i know he had an week- absolute moon ball yesterday too yeah launched so absolutely the thing launched. with wit i've said this multiple times the offseason the way you get the best of Whit Merrifield is you play him every day. Yeah, which is, I think, what the Jays are going to do. I think John Schneider is smart with that, right? You'd have to think. And it's like Biggio, Espinal, you split versus a righty and a lefty, maybe. I don't know what their splits are like. But Whit Mer- Merrifield needs to be playing pretty much every day. That's how you get the best out of him, the most production, I would think. No, for sure. I think, yeah. That, yeah, it's... um. It's just, he, he's a guy that's going to be he's going he's gonna to be a big part of this team, I think. Underrated signing. Same with Brandon Belt. I think Brandon Belt's going to be good. I think Brandon Belt's going to be not really good, but I think he's going to be good. Mm-hmm. And I think uh, Brandon... By the way, the John Boy guys thinking that Brandon Belt will play first a lot of the time over Vladdy in that uh, video is what is just like, what What are we doing here? Like, what, what, like are we... Like, do we just not know baseball at all? Uh, like, at all? It's just that, that was a wild... <laughs> That was fucking insane, but yeah, man. I um, a lot of things to look forward to for this year. I think it. This is going to be one of the weird. This is going to be one of the most exciting. This is probably like I said. I've said multiple. This is the most excited I've been for a season in a very, very long time. And we're almost at our year anniversary, man. God, we're almost at our year anniversary. That's got to be soon. April seventh. Wow, that was the first one. What a yeah. what a, what a year. Because the lockout, right? So uh, yeah, because the lockout. So the Jays started a little bit later. Um. Yeah, it's just crazy that this podcast is even a year old yet. I think that's the craziest thing. Like that's that's fucking insane to me. And by the way, um, in St. Louis, we will be doing our first ever in person podcast together. Me and Ave never done it before. Every single podcast we've done here has been over Zoom. Well, it'll that's- be over a recording something as well. But we'll two of us in a room together. What I do think- you mean it'll be be over recording? It'll be like OBS or something. It'll still be um, recorded that way. But I think it's just got to be opening day. Me and you, like, pretty fucked up immediate thoughts. Yeah. And then we'll just drop it. Um, Because opening day is on third. Yeah. We'll drop it Friday morning. Yeah. We'll do it. Record. I think it makes. I think the best time to do it is record Thursday after the game. Immediate reaction. And then Friday for the no game. 
the people have like a chance to listen to the podcast and like the weekend preview and stuff like that. Yeah, for sure. Because we won't be able to record one Sunday night. We'll have to record on the Monday once we're once we're back. But... Yeah, yeah. I yeah. The, the, this is I'm pumped, man. I, I, I'm so pumped for this year. This is fucking. We're so close, boys. Like I just remember us recording podcasts in like December with fuck all to talk about. And now we're like, we're close. We're going to be doing two episodes a week. The people are pumped for two episodes a week. It's going to be all time. And uh, yeah, man. So a- any last things? I mean, obviously we've, we've, uh, we've been snapping it around. So a- any last things, JR Avery? I think we're good. I think we're good. I'm excited, man. It's getting close. I mean, it's good to see some competitive baseball on TV. Gets me excited. We so have, then, yeah. So we the have the tickets episode. in my account. Like I'm, I'm starting to get ready for St. Louis. Yeah. Worried about the money aspect, but. I'm excited to be in St. Louis. And yeah, and another thing too, like another awesome thing is is uh this is it for one one day a week episode. Like this is the last week we'll only have one episode because next week we'll have the Sunday one and then we'll be in St. Louis for the Thursday uh preview. I'll come so up with the... some questions for the uh, we're going to do a season preview next week. Yeah. But it'll be we won't do like maybe we'll do record finish like top supr- like best hitter Best yeah. picture, things we'll, like that. We'll, we'll figure stuff out. I'll make a TikTok. I'll make a TikTok story about it, but we'll we'll figure some stuff out. But anyways, man, as always, love you guys. Uh gate 14 forever. Next week, the gate 14 tattoo will be getting done. At, actually in St. Louis, sorry, on the Friday, on the thigh. Gate 14 forever will be put there. And uh Avery, actually, I'm gonna put you to tattoo. If I pay for you to get one, will you get a gate 14 forever? Little tattoo on you. Yeah, yeah, I'd get a gate 14. I'll pay, tattoo. I'll buy Avery's tattoo. Well, this is what we have. we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out once it comes. I feel like that'll be electric. Then JR is gonna have to get one, yeah. unfortunately. But JR, uh, man, his body's too pure. He wouldn't get a tattoo. We'll figure something out. But as always, man, love you guys. And thank you guys for holding me accountable by uh continuing to DM me where it wants my tattoo coming. So I appreciate that. Thank you guys for holding me accountable. Uh love you guys and uh Let's have let's have ourselves a final full week of spring training baseball. Why not us?